Hello everyone and welcome to my Realism Overhaul slash RP0 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. I've decided to start this series even though I don't have clouds yet. I was originally waiting for clouds. We don't have clouds. For those who don't know what Realism Overhaul is, it's a set of mods that uh, essentially turns the Kerbin system, Kerbal system, into, uh, into Earth and our regular solar system. And it has all sorts of realism features that I will discuss before starting things out or in the course of doing things in this install. Uh, my goal has been to create a very spare install, meaning uh, not much by way of uh, frills, but as many engines as possible because that's what make thing, makes things interesting. Um, so let's get started and I'll talk about things along the way. Uh, I have done some testing in, uh, in Twitch live streaming. And so if we resume saved here, you'll see I have the oops, I have the RP0 thing for for the Twitch live streaming, but we'll do things a little bit differently here than I did on Twitch. On Twitch, I'm trying to uh, do as much as possible with as little technology as possible. Here, I think I'm going to try and go as quickly as possible so that I can catch up with my existing 0.90 Realism Overhaul series. So here we've got career, and I'm gonna call this the YouTube, uh, YouTube setup. I don't think I have. Oh, I have my custom flag. Okay, good. Custom flag is in. Now let's talk about difficulty. Now according to RP0 is the tech tree. RP0 says that we should stay on normal because the building costs uh, go out of whack otherwise. But I'm not going to allow reverting flights. I'm not gonna allow quick loading. Not gonna allow missing crews to respawn and not going to have uh, no entry purchase so we got to purchase stuff so it's got to be at least decently hard on those scores but we'll have the normal bonuses and rewards and such like that uh, because that's how the tech tree is balanced and we need a special tech tree for realism overhaul and I'll show you that in a bit okay let's accept this and proceed So here we are right at the start, and TAC Life Support is our life support system, so the Kerbals will need food, water, and oxygen, and I've got that enabled, so we'll close that. Uh, I'll accept Gene Kerman's greeting. And so we, here we have Kerbal Alarm Clock, which is a very common mod, and here we have Kerbal Construction Time asking me to choose a preset, and I'm going to choose the preset that is suited to RP0, the Realistic Progression Zero Tech Tree that I'm using with Realism Overhaul and so this is the appropriate setup and so I'll say save that and I'm gonna spend my upgrades now this is one of the things that I uh, I tested out in my twitch live streaming and so now I know how this works so the VAB upgrades the uh, Kerbal construction time delays uh, well it, it makes the construction of rockets take time and so I want to make sure to upgrade the VAB so it takes less time we start out with 0.1 build points per second I'm going to up that to uh, 0.6 at least and I'm going to up the next tier to 0.3 so you can build two rockets at the same time and so the second rocket will be building about half the speed as the first rocket I'm not putting anything into the SPH just yet and we could buy more points uh, using funds but we don't have that that much by way of funds now uh, here development uh, 0.01 science per day I think we could add a little bit more to that, um, but it's probably not as worthwhile as maybe adding some more points to this. Okay, so we've got some decent building going there. And now one thing I found out during my Twitch testing of this is that you have to go to a tracking center first, otherwise uh, it doesn't set up properly. It'll reset the thing. So I want to go to a tracking station, make sure it understands this side of things. And that's because each uh, location, you see you can uh, actually change locations. Let me bring down the Kerbal Construction Time thing here. Um, with uh, KSC Switcher, which is another mod, you can switch the location that you're launching from. And so right now I'm launching from Cape Canaveral, which is just fine, because the terrain can be glitchy otherwise. But uh, you can switch locations, and depending on your location, you can have different build point setups in curb, Kerbal Construction Time. So that's why we've got this complication and we have to pop into the tracking station early on. Now you'll notice in the corner here I've got something else here. That's Remote Tech. And so uh, Remote Tech 
Uh, we'll get into that. We have to launch communication satellites and all that. But uh, here we are. We're going to be launching from Cape Canaveral here. So currently in the dark, but that's alright. We'll need time to build our rockets, as mentioned. But otherwise, uh, yep, let's uh, go to the VAB and see what we've got to do. Oh, wait, let's go to the tech tree first. So this is the RP-0 tech tree, and it's very, very different from the normal tech tree that you know and love in stock KSP, and that's because there's a lot of mods that are incorporated into it. At the start level, we've got a certain amount of very weak things. I'll show you how weak in a sec. But we do have like uh, interesting biological sample capsule, aka goo containers, and all the basics, fins, lights, uh, a lot more than you get actually in the start node of the regular uh, KSP tech tree. But again, uh, things expand quite dramatically with a lot of room for modded parts. And uh, yep. Uh, and of course nuclear propulsion of various kinds. Lots of nuclear stuff here, but the, this for like the uh, near future uh, mod pack and possibly the KSP interstellar mod pack. And so th it's just room for those. I don't have those in, that's why you don't, you, see, you don't see any available parts. But if I had those mods in, you'd see parts here. Okay, and so I have some mod uh, packs here and that's why we have some stuff in experimental rocketry and gigantic rocketry, and colossal rocketry, and so forth. But we'll focus on uh, this level first, and now let's go to the VAB. Now, one thing I'm not going to do is explain how to install this, because frankly, um, it's not the easiest thing. Oh, uh, note that my build points are not point 0.1, and that is because I need to step out and actually spend them again. Remember I told you that the tracking station resets things? I actually need to spend those build point, uh, spend those upgrade points again. So yeah, upgrades. Uh, so there's the icon for Kerbal Construction Time, and I just need to go back to point seven and point three. Don't worry, you'll keep after this. I don't have to keep doing this. Okay, so now it's all good. Uh, the science is not reset because that's not dependent on which launch location you're at. This is. Okay. So as I was saying, I'm not gonna discuss how to install. Uh, install this uh, set of mods, Realism Overhaul, and that's because uh, each install is sort of depending on what you want to do with it. Uh, you can't fit all the mods in the world in, right? Because KSP has a 4 gigabyte RAM limit right now. And so you're going to have to pick and choose, and using CCAN isn't really an option because you, you really need to go into the mods and delete stuff that you're not going to use. And so you really should be installing the mods one at a time, uh, seeing what parts you're going to use and what parts you don't. You, you'll have to install the required stuff first and maybe you can use CCAN for that. But after you install the requirements for Realism Overhaul, nothing else, just the requirements, then you'll have to add the mods one by one and delete the parts that you're not going to use. And so it's been a very complicated process to put this install together because I've deleted a lot of parts here and there, made sure that everything's very trim, so that I don't go beyond the RAM usage limit and even then I'm using DirectX 11 right now so I forced DirectX 11 on KSP. KSP by default runs DirectX 9. Uh, DirectX 11 has the effect of, uh, of reducing the RAM usage for some reason I don't understand at the expense of some graphical glitches occasionally so that's a drawback. Alright so let's take a look at our pods. We've got the Beach Bonanza Cabin, for those of you who want to build aircraft. Right now we're going to focus on rockets. This guidance unit uh, will give you avionics. So here we've got a guidance unit and it says avionics OK, which is excellent. But uh, let's set that aside for a sec. Here we have sounding rockets, rocket avionics package. Now this does not have guidance. You can see insufficient avionics which basically means that you're not going to be able to control the rocket once you launch it, except for staging. You can stage it, but you cannot control it otherwise. So uh, don't expect to be able to turn it or do anything like that. This has SAS, Stability Assist, all the SAS normal stuff, and it even has science. This also has science, by the way. It has a science experiment, but it does not have control. Uh, so that's a little bit of a trick, and we'll, we'll talk about how to deal with that. I'll explain some of this other stuff later on. Right now, uh, here's remote uh, tech, by the way. 
And right now we've got a 200 kilometer antenna range here. This guy's unit only has a 20 kilometer antenna range. I'm going to start off with this avionics package first. Uh, because it's so much smaller, it's 10 times smaller than this guy's unit. And that allows us to make a nice cheap rocket to try things out and so I can show you what's up. But uh, again, we're not going to be able to control it after launch. So we're going to have to be a little bit careful. Now these are our starting fuel tanks. Uh, some of these are retextured tanks, uh, retextured by Venn's stock revamp. So these are actually uh, the uh, modifications on the Oscar B fuel tank. And uh, yeah, they're all very small. See, they're 0.625 size. But mainly for this, we're going to be using these procedural real fuels tank that are added by procedural parts. This is the standard RCS tank. And you see sometimes that they're non-RO RP0 yes. That means it's not suited for a realism overhaul, but if RP0 says yes, then it's alright for use with this tech tree. And uh, otherwise some of them will say RP0 no cost, which means that they haven't come up with the, a balanced cost for it, but you can still probably use it. Uh, it might be too expensive or too cheap, depending on your point of view. Uh, okay, so we're going to start off with a procedural tank here. And I'm also going to want a nose cone. Now, you probably don't want to use the procedural nose cone. And that's because you've got the max temp of 1073 degrees. Uh, probably you're going to want to go with either this protective nose cone Mark 7, though some people have reported some problems with that, or this small nose cone. And these both have a uh, max temp 700 degrees higher than that one. And remember, we've got... Uh, now, obviously, in 1.0, uh, the stock game already has heat effects, but uh, here we have deadly reentry as well. But we also have real heat. Deadly reentry doesn't actually mess with reentry heating anymore. You can see here that's basically relying on the the stock heating model. Uh, real heat, however, is messing with the stock heating model to adjust it for real solar system and realism overhaul. So that is something to keep in mind. So this, uh, the stock, stock heating is not exactly the same in here. It's, uh, it's being modified by real heat. Okay, well, let's get the size down first. I think it was uh, about there. Now these are procedural parts. They give you different shapes to use. I think I'm just going to go with a cone. And then you have different textures, and you can add other texture packs. There are other texture packs available, not just this one. Okay. Um, so yeah, not, I don't know about Saturn. Redstone is what I've been using on the live stream, so I'll start off with that. We do have science. Now, the probe core already has science. You know, I showed you that. Uh, we do have science in the form of barometer, uh, thermometer, and a goo container. Uh, for this first flight, though, I'm just going to have the probe zone science, and we'll see how far we get. Now, as far as engines go, at the start node, we have this, this Aero-B sustainer, which uh, generates about 7.6 kilonewtons in vacuum, 6.6 .6 on the surface. You get to start at once, and that's important in realism overhaul. You don't get to start the engines whenever you feel like it. Uh, this one has one ignition, and that's it. After that, uh, once you shut it down, that's the end of it. Uh, this is a SRB, this is an SRB, that's an SRB, that's a jet engine. Okay, and so basically this is the rocket of choice if you want to go liquid fuel here. This is just separation motors. This one I've never been fond of, so I'll just leave it at that. And besides that, I don't think it's properly configured because it says solid fuel. You notice here it says PSPC as the propellant, and that's because that's the actual name of the propellant. Here it goes to solid fuel, so I think it needs some configuration update there too. I also don't like the engine ISP, it's very round numbers and I don't find that believable. I like these numbers better because they have, you know, decimal places and such. Okay, and notice that it actually uses three different propellants, which is an interesting thing. I'm going to put four of them here because uh, that's what worked as a base rocket for the live stream. I want to, like I said, I want to get on with this uh, ASAP. I don't want to belabor our progress. In a lot of my YouTube series, I 
I take my time, but I'm not going to do it here because I want to catch up with the other series. Now, uh, here we have a thrust to weight around Earth. Now, note, uh, Earth, we've got all the actual planet names, and in the tracking station, you'll see the real planet names and moon names. Uh, so that is a plus. But uh, here it is for Earth, and we see our thrust to weight ratio. This is sea level thrust, and that's important to pay attention to here. 4.4, uh, too much, so we can lengthen this a bit. Uh, that's probably too long. We, we could probably go fatter then. Yeah, well, we're going to need to add fins. So 1.9 seems reasonable, though I'd like a burn time of a nice round one and a half minutes. Sounds like a good plan. Okay, let's put some fins. Okay, I want to use this basic fin, I think. Seems reliable. And note that uh, with avionics, you have to have enough avionics for the vessel mass. And so different avionics systems will have different max amounts. So this one can carry 20 tons. It'll give you SAS control for 20 tons. After that, you don't have any control. So if you make a rocket with more than 20 tons, you're not going to have control over it. So keep that in mind. And of course, as you go on in the tech tree, you're going to be able to unlock even better ones. So, yeah, I'm going to, you know, I, I, I'll i only have uh, four fins. It is extra mass, after all. I'm going to tilt them just a little bit. And this is to spin stabilize it. And this is something that we tried out in the Twitch live streams as well. So it's giving us a little bit of a spin there. That might be too much. Just a tiny bit. Okay. I think those fins are a little bit too big for this. I've got tweak scale, and so I'm going to tweak scale them down to about 80%. You see this mass strength thing here, and uh, I'm going to reduce the mass of them. That also reduces the strength, but we'll see what that turns out causing. If it uh, if the strength goes down too much, fair mirror space, which is our our thing to make the aerodynamics realistic, and uh, boy does it. Uh, will rip those fins off and cause this thing to go out of control. So we definitely need strength, it's just a matter of figuring out how much strength. And to do that, we do testing. And so we're going to test this one out and see if that's enough strength or not, or whether we're going to need to increase that. And everything's a trade-off, and everything's a challenge. And I've tried to make this as challenging as possible with some helper tools, but a lot of challenging stuff going on here. Okay, so we've got this rocket. I'm gonna use my typical naming convention convention, and call this Alpha. Okay, so let's take out, well, no, let's not take it out to launch pad. Let's queue it up for building. Now notice it'll take 10 days to build it, so we're gonna build it. I'm never gonna simulate the vessels in this, and on the likely chance that this is going to have engine failure, and we'll talk about that in a sec, I'm going to build another one. Note that the cost is 92 and uh, considering our budget that doesn't seem like much but it'll seem like a lot more once we discuss all the troubles that we're going to go through. Okay so yeah let's take a look at our contracts to see what we could do with this and what contracts we can fulfill. Okay so we've got a first flight contract that seems obvious let's pick that up and we've got a pass the Carmen line contract and so that's to get into space now here it says above a hundred thousand meters but and that's the Carmen line but uh, uh, keep in mind that space actually in realism overhaul and real solar system is at 130 kilometers so um, yeah the even though the Carmen line is set at 100 kilometers uh, you need to get a little bit further than that if you really want to get into uh, no drag space in realism overhaul. Okay, but let's pick that up. I don't know if we'll get to uh, those lines. We also have uh, automatic contracts to uh, hit certain altitude records and speed records. And these are separate crude and uncrewed records. So we're going to be going for the uncrewed records, obviously. And unless something horrible happens, these should be fairly easy to hit. Okay, so and we'll get some good funding for that. 
By the way, it's worth noting something about Kerbal Alarm Clock. You'll note that current time says January 1st, 1951, and that's because the whole real solar system in this is uh, actually set to start off in 1951 on January 1st. So if you time warp uh, 10 years, you're going to have the entire solar system uh, in the position it was in 1961, for instance, and so forth. So uh, we're going in real time here, and so this launch will occur in 1951. And I guess uh, as I time warp to the completion of our first rocket, so uh, this is Kerbal Construction time again, and we'll wait the 10 days. I guess you could say that maybe the backstory to this is that uh, in Roswell in 1947, uh, the, the Kerbals actually landed and uh, actually in parallel with the normal space race that you have with with uh, the German scientists helping out uh, and all that uh, you also had Kerbals uh, offering their expertise to uh, this particular branch of the space program perhaps competing with Werner von Braun somehow anyway let's uh, roll out the Alpha rocket now that that has happened so yeah uh, even rolling it out to the launch pad takes time and so that'll get us to daylight at least. And all the Kerbal Construction Time stuff ends up over here too. Okay, rollout complete. Now we can launch. So yeah, even though this is all real solar system and all that, I do like to preserve the sense that Kerbals are involved and uh, that we are actually still playing with Kerbals and so the, uh, there's always a backstory for me and the basic backstory is that they actually uh, came into our solar system through a physics glitch and uh, well in this case that physics glitch could have uh, led to the whole uh, Roswell thing I guess I don't know anyway there is a story for you if you like one anyway now now when we get to this part uh, we are in the grips of test flight and that's this one test flight is going to make you uh, do testing of your engines before they're really safe to use and uh, this uh, MTBF is mean time before failure that means on average uh, we have 181 seconds before we're gonna have a failure of one of these engines now that's on average that doesn't mean that uh, we can't have a failure right away and we probably will Black Corporal is another name for the Aero B sustainers that we've got. It's actually the base form of them. You can upgrade the engines. That's something else that you can do that I haven't mentioned. We've got this flight HUD, and that's over here. And that'll show us when uh, test flight decides to kill the engines. Now, again, with more testing, you'll have better engine re reliability. Right now, we have 6,000 data units. I think somebody said that the max is 10,000 and so we'll be getting data units by testing. Okay, now once we launch we don't have control. We gotta hold it on the launch clamps until we're sure that all four engines are lit. So that's the plan here. Smart ASS is not actually gonna do anything. So, but I'll keep it there because because I like it there. Alright, uh, there is no SAS unit and so uh, let's just try it. Okay. All four engines are lit. Here we go. One seems to have a problem. This seems to still read all four lit, but one seems to have a problem. That's probably why it's spinning a little bit more out of control than it should. Oh wow, one just exploded. Okay, so uh, total loss of one engine. We're, we're still sort of spin stabilized here and so even though we lost one engine the spinning is actually keeping us pointed prograde or close to it okay uh, we should be past the speed of sound now this is pretty good for a first flight in uh, with all this stuff going on here's fair mirror space and you can see your Mach number here, Reynolds number. If you know your uh, aerodynamics, this is a real handy thing. Flight data, dynamic pressure, so you can even figure out when your maximum dynamic pressure is. You can see it's going down. We're past that now. We're past max Q. Still going. We've uh, fulfilled some stuff. Uh, well, I'll, I'll deal with this later because uh, it'll block the view of the rocket. 
now that we're up here, we should do some science. I should have action grouped this. Oh, I had it right there. Come on. There we go. So you can analyze telemetry, and that'll give you some science. Now remember, the probe core itself has an internal internal uh, antenna, and so that's what we're transmitting on. Uh, test flight seems to think two more are gonna go soon. Of the engines, I mean. It doesn't take too much electric charge to do this sort of data. Okay, so we got 1.1 science for that data. From Earth's tropics, I think I saw. This is not doing too badly, all things considered. I can tell you that initial launches in this sort of setup can be very frustrating. Now, again, I did have a little bit of a head start because I knew what worked and what didn't thanks to the Twitch live streams that I did post on YouTube as well. If you haven't seen those, do check those out. So there are four videos available to show what I did before starting this series. Now we have no parachutes, so uh, this is gonna die one way or another. But we're filling quite a lot of contracts along the way, so that's good. Are we gonna pass 100 kilometers, though? Well, we might get an apoapsis above 100. It looks like it. But then we're still subject to drag all the way up to 130, so... It's open question how that's gonna work out. I wonder if the sounding, uh, I wonder if this has a different biome right now. Yeah, it does. Over, over water, upper atmosphere. Okay, let's transmit that. Okay, engines are out. Uh, better than I thought it'd go. Let's check our data points. Uh, you see that the engine that failed, uh, that only resulted in a mild increase above the 6,000 that we started with. And then, uh, actually, uh, the engine that exploded isn't even showing up here. But uh, then we have more data points for the ones that uh, ran a little bit longer. Okay. I think uh, when it says loss of thrust, it doesn't necessarily mean complete loss of thrust. It might mean that it's just going lower than expected. Uh, so if it is supposed to go at uh, 7 kilonewtons, it might end up going uh, only at 3 or something like that. I think that's what happened and why it was still running uh, with all en all three engines here seeming to continue. Okay, we're in space now, so I can analyze telemetry. And yep, uh, in space, just above Earth's grassland. So you can get a lot of a lot of science like this because it's biome dependent, surface biome dependent. I mean. Okay, so uh, let's see. Contract complete. Uh, we went above 100 kilometers, uh, went above 2,000 meters per second, above 80, above all these are obvious once you get that one done. Okay, first flight, obviously. And, uh, yep, that's all our notifications handled. All right, I'm gonna time warp till this gets back down and uh, I'll cut to the explosion. Note that we do have a signal delay here, by the way. Uh, the further we get, the longer the signal delay will be. Of course, I don't have much control over this right now. It's not so obvious what the effect, what the effect is. So uh, we'll get to that later on. Okay, here we go. Below 40 kilometers, side slip, all sorts of bad G forces going on. Far is gonna have a field day soon. Heating. Oh yeah, real heat as well. Of course, it is sort of like a dart, so it's not going to get too much heating. And of course, we have a nose cone that can take a lot of heat. Will it survive? Ooh, it, it, actually, it's uh, severe aerodynamics. Actually helped it to survive through that, but it's going to crash into the surface of the water. Very interesting. Heck, nominal flight status even. Now, notice we no longer have connection because uh, A, we don't have any line of sight, B, we're probably beyond the 200 kilometer thing. That's not exactly how the 
range is calculated for remote tech, but it's good to approximate like that anyway. If it says 200 kilometers, I just approximate like that just as a shorthand. Okay, well, there goes our first rocket, but uh, uh, significant success. Let's go back to Space Center. Now we've got another one of those cooking because I didn't honestly didn't expect that all four engines would light initially and in that case we'd have to recover the rocket and uh, launch this one instead but uh, since that one was a success I don't even know if we need this one but we got 6.8 science so let's take a look at our our nodes to see what we can unlock I'm not doing uh, planes and frankly this nose cone is not very sorry cockpit even this isn't very uh, inspiring but uh, we've got five signs for that ten signs necessary for this well early construction hmm this is a bunch of fuel tanks and you know I'm gonna be using the oh well, we do have service bays but mostly I'm going to be using the procedural tanks so they're not really very useful right now I think I'm gonna hold off on that and save up for uh, these because here we get some engines. We get some very important engines, in fact. So I'm going to wait until we can unlock these engines. Oh, okay, okay. Um, complicated engine here. You'll note that the top one, the part says max thrust 1 kN, and you're going, what the heck? Uh, but underneath that, you'll note max thrust 133.8 kN. And that's because this actually has not only a main engine, but also also vernier thrusters which help with stability and so the one kN ones are actually the vernier thrusters that are helping with stability and the 133 is the main engine okay alright so we'll hold off on that and these are provided by uh, stock extensions and uh, I think the textures might be modified by Ben stock revamp I don't know okay uh, yep so more science well, the first thing we should do is probably send up the thermometer and barometer, and we're going to do that in a uh, fairing. So, actually, we could probably put the controller in a fairing as well. Let's uh, widen up the top of this. And let's put a fairing here. And so, procedural fairings, another mod. And I'm going to reduce the size of this. Don't know if it's really safe. I've heard mixed uh, messages about that. We'll find out. Uh, and the safety thing is with the small size. A Kerbal, Kerbal Space Program doesn't necessarily like things that are small size. Hmm. But then again, thermometer and barometer I really don't want inside a fairing. They should be exposed to the atmosphere so that they get the proper reading, right? I mean, just, just thinking about it reasonably. Yeah, yeah, I don't like this idea of putting them in a fairing. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we'll have we'll have a inset segment using this procedural structural part, something like this. I don't know if this will work. We are in uncharted territory now for this particular install with all the weird mods involved. Okay, and seems reasonable to, well, A, let's uh, change the texture of that, and B, oh, I've got uh, action groups extended, by the way, that's what this is. We're not going to see too much use of that uh, for this series, I don't think, but that's for other purposes. So I'm going to say log pressure data there, and for number two, I'm going to log temperature data. Okay, and that'll get us some extra science. I'm not doing the goop container yet, because it's a uh, additional mass and uh, well I don't know how does it fit oh it's bigger okay so it's bigger additional mass and maybe we want to recover that I think we want to recover that so a parachute would be necessary for that as well well it's not necessary for this uh, don't ask me about the attachment point that's fall, uh, floating off to the side no clue okay so this is going to be alpha s for science and I'll build two as usual Still taking about 10 days to build these things. Thankfully, the th thermometer and barometer don't take too much time to build. Okay. Okay, here we are reconditioning the launch pad, something else that Kerbal Construction Time makes you do. And now, uh, proceeding with the 
construction. I could cancel the construction of the alpha. I could also adjust it and actually bring it back into the VAB in order to modify it. I could have modified it into an alpha S, but I'm gonna keep it in storage just for uh, just for the heck of it, and uh, that'll help me verify that things are going all right with the mod. If I suddenly see that disappear, I'll know that something is wrong and uh, I don't want to proceed if it's gonna start eating my rockets in the storage. So yeah, that's the idea there. We've... okay, let's continue building. Days fly by, we're almost through January 1951 here. Okay, and some of the other realism mods I haven't touched upon, I've got uh, persistent rotation, which means that even while time warping, rotation will continue. So you can't do the whole uh, use time warp to stop your rotation thing. And uh, other than that, I think that's... Uh, we've got stage recovery for that sort of thing, and here's tack life support. Other than that, I don't think there's anything I haven't mentioned. This scans that. Okay. All right, so, uh, oh, by the way, if you're wondering, we can't do science on the ground. This is realism overhaul, and it gives you nothing. Okay, so just in case you were wondering about that. All right, let's see if all the engines work. Um, let me check the volume. Okay, just for you to know, volume is at 1% on the spacecraft, so if you thought the engine sound was really, really loud, well, <laughs> that's just how it is. Got to get some distance so that I don't uh, kill my ears again. Here we go. Impressive that they all worked. Oh, spoke too soon. We lost thrust on one. Uh, okay, well that didn't work out. So, lost a thrust on one there, I guess. Note that our, our actual data units are pretty good, but that one, that one failed. Okay. Alright, well we've got more waiting for us, so let's just get on with it. Ah, though, uh, actually, we have a build slot free, so I'll build another Alpha S for now. So, as far as sounding rockets are concerned, we're way ahead of the game. Uh, we already have space under our belt. We need to get to orbit next, and I'm not going to try and do this, do that with these Airbees. I'll save that for the Twitch live streams because that's uh, highly amusing. But. Uh, I'll wait for the... I want to get the science and build a Vanguard rocket to get to orbit. Okay, or perhaps something else, depending on what engines are available. Okie dokie. So, yeah, let's just build another one of these. Okay, another Alpha S is ready, and we're rolling it out. I've got some visual mods involved. I've got engine light, or lighting. I think it's engine lighting. And I've also got uh, movie time, as I used in the live stream. So maybe we'll movie time this one. We'll go to black and white film. It's not that great when you have the GUI there as well, but... Okay. Yep, I think we'll try it out. Let's see if the engine's all light, and then we'll go. Okay, looks like a good start. Now, okay. Okay, and temperature. I don't think we're over a new biome right now. We'll have to gain some altitude before we're in upper atmosphere. Whoa. Interesting how the spinning slows down higher in the atmosphere. Definitely an effect to note. G forces going up. Pretty close to burnout here. There we go, engines burned out. No more noise. Okay, let's get some more science. Upper atmosphere? That one's not biome dependent, the barometer. 
So that's a little bit weaker. Not as much bang for your buck with the barometers. And let me quickly get the upper atmosphere over Earth's tropics from the temperature scan. Let's so get another three signs there before we hit the space. And here's space, pressure scan, still works, 4.5 science. I believe we already did the probe core here, did we, or was it over water? Oh, that was over water, so we get uh, some probe core stuff. Note, uh, not much electric charge consumption. In realism overhaul, the science transmitting doesn't cost uh, extra because the thing has to be in communication with the probe core all the time anyway. Okay, and then temperature scan in space above Earth's, Earth's tropics. Okay, lots of science done. And we should hit a new altitude record, probably not a new speed record. We've completed two vessels, nothing new on in terms of, oh, whoa. That was unexpected. The procedural structural element exploded due to overheating. Yeah, well, that's uh, the procedural structural element has overheating issues. I that is a problem. But that doesn't limit our ability to make uh, new records. We got to an altitude record of 120 kilometers. I thought we did that with the other one. Yeah, interesting with the procedural structural elements. I'll have to remember not to use those. I don't know why it said 120 kilometers. I think we w went way past that. And we should be hitting other altitude records already. Unless uh, stuff above 120k doesn't matter. Alright, well I'm not going to follow this back down. We're just going to space center this and uh, and leave. Well, let's wait till it reaches its apoapsis and then I'll I'll leave it be. We've lost our extra scientific instruments, so even if it ends up over water, we're not going to be able to do those. Unless, uh, well, yeah, we can't do those because we can't transmit it. Okay, no new records. Alright, back to Space Center. Okay, here we are, and we've got 28.1 science, so we will unlock early orbital rocketry which uh, gives us the stuff from 1950 to 1957 very important uh, do we want this stuff yet ooh oh, well um l we should probably fill things out because otherwise we won't get the stuff you know around these other nodes like batteries might be important at some point so yeah i'll get uh, early construction first and I think we can get to orbit with Vanguard. I know, uh, we're, we're going to go as quickly as possible, but uh, give me one chance with just uh, early orbital rocketry to actually get into orbit. And we'll do that in the next episode. I'll see what's necessary, unlock the appropriate parts, and we'll try to get to orbit in the next episode, and then we'll proceed from there. Alright, so uh, with that I'll say thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions about the format of this, and you know, uh, I've done a lot of Realism Overhaul series, so if you have any uh, questions about the stuff or uh, comments about how I might make this a little bit more interesting, uh, please do leave those comments in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.